What's up, Design Family, and welcome back to another episode of Fit Design TV. So glad to have you guys back on the channel. On today's episode, we'll be looking at the importance of consistency when it comes to building your creative agency or your creative brand. I get it. I've been in your shoes. I have an idea for a creative agency or a creative talent I want to bring to the market, but what are the steps that I need to take to turn this seemingly wild idea that maybe some others might tell you that you can't do into a full-fledged business, one that is profitable, one that is growing month to month. And really, I know it sounds so simple, but I'll unpack it in this specific episode, but it is the power of consistency. It's the power of compounding your efforts over time. So you wanna learn more about how you can actually implement this power? Watch this video and I'll run you through step by step. What's up design family? And welcome to Fit Design TV. So glad to have you here. On this channel, we discuss all things sports, fashion, graphic design, manufacturing, and technology. We'll discuss key topics, answer pressing questions, and provide actionable steps on starting your own product line. If you're interested in any of the above topics, stick around. You're in for a good one. Look at your business. Look at anything that you want to achieve in life as a vehicle. Your vehicle can either be malnourished or it can be under supplied or it can be under resourced or you can actually pour every single bit of yourself into it. And this is the power of your effort. Your effort is a variable that you can control, you and only you. Think about all the things that are uncontrollables in your life and discard those. Giving those the thought, the time and the attention will not propel you forward. Truly, one thing that you can control is your effort. And the consistency you bring in your effort day in, day out is how you build the things that you truly want to build. And this is why I love consistency. Consistency is the power of doing something day in, day out, even and especially when you don't feel like it. This is where 99% of people will falter. When they have an idea, they will execute on it. They'll spend a day, two days, a week, three weeks, and eventually they lose the motivation and they lack that consistency. They build something up until it's inconvenient for them. And all of a sudden, it's no longer a priority. Whether it's their health, whether it's their fitness, whether it's their relationships, when the motivation is no longer there and it will no longer be there, you stop putting the effort. Consistency is the power of compounding. Doing something like building a business is a tremendous undertaking. And I'll give you guys a specific example from my own business. Moving into sports or design, which number one was not a field that I even studied. I knew I wanted to pursue this, but I didn't have a formal education in this. The idea was I would create something every day, no matter how horrible, no matter how bad, no matter how stressed, no matter how tired, no matter how unmotivated, no, how, no matter how busy, I would actually put in a single repetition of design work every single day in order to build up my portfolio, in order to build up my skill set, in order to engage myself in a variety of different situations that I would ultimately learn from. And had I not gone through that intense year of creating something, of literally pouring in four to five hours alongside my education, alongside my personal life, alongside my fitness life, and actually putting the time and effort in, into actually building up my portfolio, I would not have achieved the bare minimum in order to create a design agency that now is working with over a thousand brands. We have over 15 employees and we're continuously growing. So this comes down to the power of consistency. Put in the work every single day, despite how you feel, especially when you don't feel like you want to put in the work and watch it compound over time. I want to emphasize the importance of effort. It's a beautiful idea because effort and your effort specifically is the only variable, and I mean the only variable in your life that you can control. You can't control anyone, you can't control your family, you can't control your personal life, you can't control anything. What you can control is the way that you get up every single day and you attack the day, the effort you put in, the way that you approach a situation, the way you choose to react to it, the energy you choose to provide it. This is a beautiful concept because if you truly want to achieve something, and I know it sounds woo woo, but bear with me. The idea that your output is 100% within your control. You're not entitled to the results, but you are entitled to what you output into the world, right? This is a manifestation of everything you built. Well, eventually, even if it doesn't strike the first time, doesn't strike the second time, by consistently putting in the effort and putting yourself in prime position to be able to capitalize on certain situations, whether it's a business opportunity, whether it's a new contract, whether it's an employee hire, whether it's XYZ, 
This is where effort comes into play. You're actually giving yourself the opportunity consistently to reap the rewards of those efforts. But if you stop putting in the effort, if you drop the one thing that's variable in your life, well, you lose that opportunity altogether. When it comes to building any form of creative business, you need to consistently be formulating good habits and consistently implementing those good habits that are going to lead you towards your desired results. Good habits come in all shapes and sizes. Good habits can be health related. They can be actually taking care to go to sleep on time, to give yourself enough rest, towards eating correctly, giving your mind the nutrition it needs, giving your body the nutrition it needs so that you can actually output the correct energy instead of potentially watching a Netflix show or spending your time with things that will not benefit you, will not actually push you forward, will not move the needle forward. Why not spend that time reading? Why not spend that time nourishing your mind? Why not spend that time networking? I know it sounds so extreme and it's not. In a sense, this is the biggest gift that you can give yourself, is the gift to truly realize your full potential. As a creative, you want to be doing that. Spend the time, implement habits that are actually going to give you the day you want, then the week you want, then the month you want, and eventually the year you want, and lastly, the life that you're gonna want. And you only do this through the power of consistency and repeating those good habits day in, day out. I'd highly encourage you guys, sit down today, look at your day to day, I'm sure 99% of creatives do not have a single structured routine that they can call on. Well, I know every single day what time I'm getting up, what I'll be training that day, what I'm going to be eating for breakfast, what time I'm getting into the office. I know what I have to do during that day. I have a full list of tasks from priority tasks to personal tasks to team tasks. I know what I'm doing after my team get off work. I know what I'm doing at night. I know how I'm going to wind down for bed. All of these things have been meticulously put together in order to allow me to achieve the day that I want. You need to consistently be looking to perfect and automate the creative processes in your business. Just because you have something that works for you today at this scale, right? Let's just say you're a team of one does not necessarily mean that that is the system that's going to take you to the next level. As a freelancing designer, you can only answer so many emails. You can only take on so many calls. You can only deliver so many results, but when you scale from one to two, all of a sudden you have another variable here. Well, you need to be looking in terms of how you're automating your process. How are you automating your customer emails? How are you automating your deliverables? Anything you can delegate, you need to delegate. Even to this day, I spend a good amount of time in my head and actually writing down on pen and paper the parts of my business that I need to automate. I'll give you guys a very clear example. We recently implemented a Dropbox folder for our final deliverables that are meant to go out to our customers. Such a small and simple addition, but coming off of the backs of trying to look at the deficiencies in my business and figuring out how can I actually automate this part of the business? Well, this is one of many things that you can consistently be doing in your business, whether it's responding to customer emails using templates, whether it's actually sending out a portfolio instead of having to send specific examples of your work, whether it's setting up a website that answers frequently asked questions. This all comes down to how you're automating your life and how you're setting up your systems. Leverage your systems. This is how you go from point A to point B to point C to point D. Always look at things in terms of the lowest variable that you can look at. You need to consistently be replacing failure with experience. There is not a single business owner that hasn't overcome and actually been faced with a tremendous amount of failures. Failures can do one of two things. They can either stop you dead in your tracks at which a failure is the end of you, or you can fail and you can choose to learn from this failure. And I promise you, the idea that you can learn from failure is such a fundamental part of growing as a human being. I honestly feel that every single failure is like, it's like a sharpening stone that sharpens my knife consistently. Every single failure, every single difficult situation, whether it's with a business prospect or it's with an employee or it's with an actual business venture that I'm going on, every single failure that I've overcome, that I've had to face, that I've had to learn from, take a step back, evaluate what I could do better and what I have done wrong, has sharpened my knife, has sharpened my ability to approach that in the future with a better mindset, with just a little bit more readiness, with just a little bit more acuity. And this is the power of failure. And one thing, you don't have to fail all of these failures yourself. The beauty of knowledge and the beauty of being able to read on other people's failures, of top CEOs' failures, of top historical figures' failures, is that you can learn from the failures. 
you can see what they've done, the challenges that they have had to overcome, and ultimately the life lessons they've learned along the way. You'd be surprised how many of your top heroes, the top CEOs of the world, have had to fail tremendous amount of times, have failed more than you could ever think of, and have actually rose up day in, day out, and overcome those failures and learned from them. You can either get bitter about a failure or you can choose to get better. I choose to fall and fail forward every single time and learn and move and continue to plot a path forward. And last but not least, when it comes to consistency, consistently do not fear the unknown. Instead, consistently attack the unknown. What is the unknown? The unknown is areas where we don't have data points, areas in our life, whether it's in business, whether it's in a personal situation, whether it's in a familial situation, it's areas where we haven't had experience in that before, we are dealing with something that is unknown to us. And in business, this is put at the highest level. Most business ventures, most scaling opportunities, most new clients are going to be the unknown. You haven't had that interaction before. You haven't actually done this strategy before. Well, this is a moment where you can either choose to shy away from something, to stay with what you know, and to keep getting the same results that you've always gotten. Or you can choose to take a risk. You can choose to tell yourself that, yes, this is the unknown, but I'm equipped and I'm ready to attack it consistently. I'm ready to see what I'm made of and I'm ready to either fail and learn from it. And now it's no longer the unknown. It's just something that I failed at once, but I'm going to attack time and time again. The unknown is fundamentally where you grow. The unknown is fundamentally where you choose to actually expand yourself and expand your horizons. The person you are today, I promise you, is not the person you're going to be tomorrow, especially if the person that you want to be tomorrow is someone that you want to look up to. This person is someone who's overcome the unknown, who's actually dove deep in and faced what they don't know, learned from it, and actually continued to plot a path forward. Guys, to recap quickly, consistency is a beautiful thing. Consistency is telling yourself and giving yourself the best possible shot to achieve the things that you want in life. As creatives, we really are faced and we're dealt with a difficult challenge. How do we stand out from the crowd? How do we give ourselves the best possible opportunity to really showcase what we're made of and really where we want to be and where we can get to? Well, consistency gives you the best possible shot. You may not get it, but you're at least giving yourself the best possible shot. So why wouldn't you want to do that? And ultimately, I promise you, in one way, shape, or form, you will get something. You will get what you want, but you just need to be a little bit patient. And that comes with a trust in the power of consistency, in the power of compounding efforts over time, and the power of yourself. So hopefully, you guys, you've enjoyed this episode. I know it was a little bit more on a, let's just say, psychological level, but this part of yourself is the part that you'll consistently doubt. And when you're faced with such difficult things, when you're, such, when you're faced with such unknowns when it comes to your business life, you're going to doubt yourself and you need to have that consistent mindset of self-belief and self-growth. If you enjoyed this episode, please consider smashing a massive thumbs up. It really does help me out. It lets me know you guys are enjoying this type of content and you wanna see more like it. And if you guys are interested in actually getting on a one-on-one -on -one private consultation call with me, I offer certain limited slots every single week. Whether you're looking to set up your own creative business or you're a fashion brand looking to start your own brand, design a collection, produce it, or you're looking to scale to the next level, definitely I think we can help you guys out. And if you enjoyed this episode, consider subscribing. Also, please make sure to tune in every single week. We put out great content like this on a consistent basis and we'd love to have you along for the ride. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of Fit Design TV. Until next week's episode, stay awesome.